Well, yes, it is an interesting passage that, uh, that we have this day to look at. This is one of those other passages where we get to hear the words of one of Jesus' sermons. So I'm hoping to let his words uh, speak as we just you know, really focus on them, maybe embellish them a little. But I'm hoping that it's his word that you hear this morning. He starts with a series of blessings upon those whom the world often curses. But then the sermon goes negative with a series of curses and warnings to those whom the world considers usually to be the most blessed. This is Jesus' sermon on the plain. And we remember the last time we looked at one of Jesus' sermons in his hometown and how Jesus spoke the truth about God's kingdom so powerfully that at the end of it everyone wanted to kill him. Jesus is preaching again. Well, it's actually like he is preaching two sermons. So if I go through them just slowly and carefully, I'm hoping that as you listen, you can choose which one is being preached for you. like a, um, a reminder that I'm part of a special order. Not a secret and, uh, so, you know, uh, funny order. It's an order of priests. Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples and said, How blissful the destitute, for yours is God's kingdom. Bless you, all you poor, most of this kingdom's world functions for the rich, helping the rich get richer and forcing the poor into even greater poverty. Good news. In God's kingdom, those whom the world, through its taxes, its legal structures, its systems of punishment, its racism, its prejudice, prejudices and put-downs, those who it makes poor, will be made rich. How blissful those who are now hungry for you will feast. Oh, how fortunate are those of you who are hungry. I know there is not much greater misfortune than hunger, but in God's kingdom that's coming, there will be more than enough for you. There will be more than enough food more than enough opportunity, a plentiful future, rather than the broken tomorrow that the world offers you. Nobody will be forced to go to bed hungry. You, the hungry, are about to be filled because God has a special place in God's kingdom for those of you who the world sends away empty. How blissful those now weeping, for you will laugh. Oh, you lucky ones who are now weeping, your tears will turn to laughter. Those of you who have received so much bad news will be the recipients of good news. God's kingdom's coming, and in that kingdom, those who mourn because of the losses that they've suffered in this world will receive 
a new world in which laughter will be the order of the day. How blissful you when men hate you and when they exclude you and reproach you and reject your name as something wicked for the Son of Man's sake. On that day, rejoice and leap about. For look, your reward in heaven is great. For their fathers accordingly did the same thing to the prophets. If you've ever been put down, left out, shunned, or disrespected because of Jesus, rejoice. If you have been punished because of your faith in Jesus, you are about to receive your reward. That's the way the world has treated people who tell the truth. Serve the truth and try to be obedient and faithful to Jesus. God loves you as much as God loves all the great but persecuted prophets of old. End of Sermon 1. Did you feel uh, that the preacher was talking directly to you? Did you think that sermon was good news for you? that had become unclear. <laughs> Sermon number two. Maybe the preacher's voice is slightly different in this one. But woe for you who are rich, for you have had your comfort. Bad news for those of you who have lots of stuff. Your day is coming. You have had the best that this world has to offer, the finest quality of everything your hearts desired. You took great joy in your possessions, feeling that they secured you and your family from misfortune, seeing your possessions as your just desserts for your hard work and prudence. You have already received the best that this world has to offer, and now that's over. Alas for you who are now replete, for you will be hungry. Those of you who have fat pensions, big houses, three car garages, big cars, and plenty of opportunities, now is your time to have less. You are about to feel, for the first time in your life, Emptiness, knowing hunger, and a sense of the void inside you, sorrow. Alas, for those who are now laughing, for you will mourn and lament. Bad luck for those of you who are happy and joyful with the way that life has treated you. Content and well satisfied, unfortunately for you, it's your turn to mourn and weep. You who have experienced the world as a joyful and a pleasant place will now get to see the other side of the story. Terrible. Alas, for you, when all men speak well of you, for in like fashion their fathers did the same things to the false prophets. Bad times ahead for those of you for whom everybody is your friend and nobody is your enemy. Unfortunately for you, you have received so much praise and adulation in this world, you're about to see how the other half lives. You shouldn't have believed all your good press. The world's praise 
you're about to find, it is a testimony to all the ways that you have compromised and sold out. End of sermon number two. I wonder which of Jesus' two sermons do you like? Actually, that's probably the wrong question, isn't it? In which of the two sermons did you feel Jesus speaking directly to you? Which sermon did you hear with a great sense of relief? On the other hand, which sermon made you squirm? This sermon is not so much a blessing and condemnation as it is a painting of the picture of God's coming reign. You remember how Jesus began his sermon in Nazareth from a few weeks ago. He said that the Spirit of the Lord has come upon me to preach good news to the poor. Good news that is God's coming reign. The Sermon on the Plain announces the news that God's coming and all those promises are being fulfilled. That God is coming into the world. The one who preaches Jesus is the one who not only announces but also embodies that new order of God's kingdom. Now so often we pray in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But Jesus' sermon on the plain, or maybe the two sermons on the plain, make me wonder if we really mean those words, if we really want God's kingdom to come, God's will to be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Do we want that will to be done when Jesus gives specificity and content to God's will. This turning upside down of the world that we might know. <clears throat> Jesus is preaching good news, but sometimes uh, the difference between good news and bad news depends a little bit on where you're standing at the time, where you hear it. I'm not sure where these uh, two sermons find you this morning and which one speaks the loudest to you. Certainly there are people here who fit into that first category who've been doing hard yards, had plenty of mourning and suffering and loss and grief and sickness, the poverty of, of good health and all sorts of things like that. There are plenty of us that fit into that second category who've had all sorts of good things and all sorts of wonderful stories of our lives. But maybe, if you were in that second category, maybe you would hear some of Jesus' words that make you squirm because you can admit that in a small way there's some truth to that. There's a truth to the accusatory tone of those woes and warnings. Now maybe it's not bad news. Maybe it's that little warning that calls out to us in the midst of good times, in the midst of so much, that we could hear those words as grace. In, in faith, that we can be accused and it could be positive. Jesus continues a bit with this sermon, but a few times he says, let those who have ears hear, or let them listen. 
And through this sermon, he seems to be saying, if you're really hearing, listen. And it makes me think that maybe this is not a a sermon that says, well, you know, half of you are going to be blessed and the other half are going to be, you know, tortured. And he's talking to his disciples. And maybe what he's really saying is that wherever these sermons find you this morning, if you hear, maybe what you're hearing is an invitation. An invitation of grace that calls you to be a part of God's kingdom. And it's whether you hear the invitation and respond more so than whether you feel you're in the first category or the second category. I was thinking a little bit as Astrid shared a part of her God moment. You know, she was so focused on doing all the things, all the work piling up around her. Uh, and one person's request, you know, was just piling up and piling up and take a number. But when that lady burst into tears, there was like a jolt that accused Astrid. There was a, an, a jolt that says, Oi, there are bigger things at play than just your list of all the stuff to do. Maybe it's accusing, but maybe it's grace that says you could respond. Maybe the same thing is happening here in this sermon. These two sermons of Jesus, that they're both words of grace. And if you're in that dark place of mourning, hear the words of grace that say joy. Rejoice for the world is about to be tipped over. In God's kingdom, all those things become opposites. And maybe if you're in that really good place and knowing that you're incredibly blessed... Maybe there's a word of grace that says, look at all the opportunities you have to bring God's kingdom. And you can be living in it when you turn those things upside down. 